my apologies. I know it looks silly. I just had a 911 call. Um, they basically the San Francisco Police Department called me back about the item that was stolen, um, and I had to give a brief give give a brief uh, explanation. Therefore, I also uh, have to go make a report tomorrow um, after work. Anyway, let's continue with what, what Michael Noel is saying. I'm going to rewind this a bit. Truth out there. Uh, a, a more cynical viewer would say, you know, you're doing it just so that you get more eyeballs on your pictures. That's a big question here. Now I remember what I wanted to say. So, how do I not know that Michael Knoll is not doing this for clicks and likes? Because I understand, like, well, you know, he comes from with the Daily Wire, you know, his, uh, empl uh, his, his co-worker, uh, Matt Walsh does it, as well as Ben Shapiro. But a lot of these political commentators do their job for clicks and likes. That's how they get paid on YouTube. The The YouTube algorithm pays them because of the clicks, views, and likes. It's the same thing with Brett Cooper. And, and I, even, I even critiqued uh, a woman named Amaya Uber Kenobi or whatever her name is. She, she's, known as, she's known on the, uh, her channel as unapologetic with Kamala, K K Amala. Uh, I'm trying to pronounce her name right. Uh, I don't want to be like Michael Hill and, you know, oh, Mr. Knowles Hill and not remember people who I'm, who I'm referring to. Uh, uh, make it her name right. Amalia. Th this woman right here. Social media personality and influencer. How do you even get hired as a, as a social media personality and influencer? And even a commentator. This young woman was born in, you know, 2000, the year 2000. Here's her birthday right here, right? You know, that right there. And 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 she's like 23 years old. And I'm wondering how the hell did she... She got discovered, obviously, by somebody. Because one of her videos, or, or whatever, went viral. Um... She's currently a Pedro U ambassador, according to this page right here. She's well known left. She, she is a well known left wing activist who later became a conservative. So she was raised in a left wing activist household. Her mother was left wing and was in the politics. I, I, I saw in a, 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 like a you know, she's giving a big ass speech to a, a campus university or you know class, and that should be dashes like the left wing activist dash who. Sorry, who ladle who da, who who dash ladle dash became whatever. Anyway, you know she hosts a podcast naturally and speaks at universities around the country. The, the, you, Matt Walsh does it. Now, you know I understand like people like Matt Walsh doing it because he's got like some experience. But this is a person who is probably just most likely just following his footsteps due to the simple fact that uh well you know she's 23 years old and wants to be like him I guess I guess kind of like a, a young Jesse Jesse Collins you know and, and but when you when you when you when you don't know when you don't have experience when you haven't been doing it long enough like what how what age did she start this shit uh, 18 19 17 you're 23 it, it would be nice if you could start a career like this at 15 when your prefrontal cortex is still maturing by the way um, but you know come back when you're like I don't know, in your 30s, don't do it at 23 when you're still, basically, in my terms, a kid. Because I'm 32, you know. I don't care how you look, you know. Um, a lot of these young people, women in particular, do this because they want clicks and likes. And YouTube is like <clears throat> their career, you know. It's their career choice. Instead of getting a job like everybody else or having something physical and out there, like, you know, customer service, or something that's, I don't know, something that provides a service to people. They turn out to be YouTubers, political commentators, and uh, influencers, you know. It's not the political commentary that gets me, it's the influencer part. It's the personality, that the, you, you happen to be a personality, a social media personality. What the hell does this even mean, personality? You know, and an influencer. Like, what is a what, what? What is a social 
media personality. Like, what does this even mean? I know this is getting off way off topic here, and we're, we're spending time. But, uh, is an online persona that people use to express themselves and interact with others on popular social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Social media personalities can be classified into four types. Leaders, influencers, creators, and professionals, which Amaya would fall into. Likers, which I guess are me. Locals, which I don't, I'm not a local, or a loner. I'm alone about, I don't know what the fuck that means. Um, uh, damn it. I have, you know, I can just point to it. Um, I, I don't have to, I really don't want to look this up, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll just read this later. Anyway, just trying to get back on topic. Uh, I, cut, I lost my train of thought. So, these people are just so young. And they're getting these jobs. I guess Michael Michael Knowles is maybe and he's in his thirties. Michael Knowles, you know, uh, uh, American political commentator. He's obviously a white wingist, and I have no problem with it. You know, I have no problem with the white. I'm glad he's a white wingist. I'm glad he's conservative. But what he said, he said a few things that seem like he's. Uh, it's like a political thing for him that he's. It, this movie is not really political, and he's like he kind of wants it to be. He's, maybe he's maybe he's disappointed that it's not political, because the director even said it. He's not trying to go one way or the other. It's kept vague for a reason. The the movie is very neutral. It's just giving you a mere observation of what a civil war would look like, or what it could possibly look like. And that's the thing about these war photographers, is a war photographer cannot be subjective. They have to be objective. They have to be, uh, not really psychopaths, but they just, they cannot get involved emotionally. Uh, even though those times when they, clearly they do, because we see how upset Joel gets, we how pissed he gets, we see how even Kirsten Dunst's character, Lee Smith, how she gets. The reason why she sacrifices herself and takes the bullet for Jesse is because... She doesn't want to be the one taking her picture. She'd rather she take her picture as she's the one that's, you know, she, Lee would rather Jesse take her picture instead of the other way around because Jesse is going to replace Lee. If Lee were to take Jesse's picture, that means that, okay, because Jesse was at a, a critical point where she could have gotten shot by any of the two uh, social, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, special forces that were protecting the president. She could have got shot by, by them at, at any point. There was two of them. Instead of instead of instead of Lee allowing her to die and taking a photo, which would have looked psychopathic, it would have looked bad in the movie. Um, I would probably I probably would have been disgusted, not have been amazed at it. I probably wouldn't have seen it again after that. I wouldn't have walked out, but I wouldn't have liked it. I definitely would have probably I, I definitely wouldn't have liked it. And I probably wouldn't have seen it again. Um, and I would definitely talk shit about it. But she does it do that, she instead pushes her out of the way and she gets shot in the back and the only reason why the show you know, just takes a photo is because she does it by instinct because she's at this point used to taking photos of people as they're shot she's gotten used to it um, but we don't see Jesse react in a you know, a psychopathic manner, a psychopathic manner, she actually reacts in a way, first she's shocked, then she looks back at her like, um, I'm sorry that it happened, and I can't believe it happened, but I do have to go get the president's photo, because he's about to be killed, because if she doesn't go hurry up, and Joel even nudges her on, he pulls her up and says, you know, tells her in a non-verbal way, um, that we have to go get the president, because I have to ask him a question, you know, I gotta get a quote, and you gotta take that photo, because he's moments from being shot, like literally, they 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 have to leave her behind. Now, most likely, and they should probably do this if they have any, if they have any um, what you call it, um, extended footage or whatever, like an extended version or uh, what they call it. They they when they leave certain scenes out. Um, anyway, any scenes that's left out in the DVD release and the you know Blu-ray release or whatever the digital release. They'd have Jesse going, Jesse and Joel going back to Lee's body, and not just paying respects, but maybe covering it up with a blanket or whatever, and having it arranged to be go to a funeral or whatever, a corner or whatever they do, and maybe expressing their sympathies. Because um, even with Sammy, I know they didn't really have much of a 
a good a goodbye. But considering the fuck circumstances, they probably just covered his eyes up and 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 you know put his body somewhere where it wouldn't disturb people. But also, a funeral was later, a funeral arrangement later. But the the whole idea is of that is. Even that, the two deaths are kept vague because it wants you, the viewer, to interpret for yourself. That's a big thing on the movie. It's it's not about a side. And I'm so sick of people thinking it's about a side. It, people have got to learn to read movies. Not, not, maybe, not Maybe not necessarily in analysis, like technical analysis with all the cinematography and camera angles and, and points of view and, and shit like that. Because I don't even know all that right now. I know some, but I don't, I don't know enough. But I know how to read a story. And I know also based on reviews, like it's not made to be a, one side or the other. It's made to be very open, very interpretive, meaning the viewer has to interpret for him or herself what this movie means, not just to them, but what it means overall. You gotta be able to read a, you gotta be able to read in between the lines, is what I'm telling you. And, and I'm, I have autism, and I, you know, there's times when I was not able to read in between the lines. Reading in between the lines is very hard for a person with, I'm not gonna say very hard, it's just hard for a person with autism. Because we have to have shit just spelled out for us. We ha you have to literally tell us what you want. We can't if if you just leave us guessing like, okay, and try to tell us later. You could have said that. You could have lived with that. You know. And but and it takes time to adapt to the whole notion. I know I'm winning in my mouth here of reading in between the lines. But you have to read the in between the lines with this movie. Anyway, I'm gonna continue. He's right. In the real life. He's right on that. His plan for a digital dollar isn't just a theory anymore. <coughs> Roll out of Bitcoin. Sorry, sorry, I was muted. I don't like how he says insurrectionist, but you know, then again, um, because. Um, he doesn't mean the Jones, he doesn't mean the, uh, the, uh, war photographers and Joel. He actually just means the, the actual, the, I guess the ins ins insurgents or whatever, um, insurrectionists. But, the best thing about it is the journalism, you know, the photo, I'm sorry, the, the, the photo journalist, they don't get in the way, because they're told very clearly to stay the fuck out of the way. Um, and they do, for the most part, but when Jesse gives Noel that, that that head nod, the head nudge, she's like, we need to still do our job. You know, we still need to go in. They they still commit to the job um, ever so carefully, except for Jesse getting in the way. But even the black woman, steadily, she steadily, she is steadily telling Jesse to get out of the way and to stay down. Like this, this is a black woman caring about a white woman, and it's not really a color thing. It's just a woman to woman type of thing. She's like, I see this younger female, and I have to remind her to get out of the way because she's gonna get herself killed. Like she's whisking, getting shot herself and being distracted, all for the sake of telling this kid. I'm sorry, this this 23 year old, and that's a kid in our age, and of course it'd be a kid to hold to stay out of the way, to just keep your head down. She's, and, and that's kind of like a. For those who are like sensitive, a, a woman provides emotion. That's like you know that makes you feel emotional. That she, even though she's trying to kill the president, she still feels uh, enough human humanity in her to make sure this younger person knows to stay out of the way while we do our job in taking out the president. That's that's a. Uh, that's kind of an emotional touch, though, because she's the only one who, well, I mean, I'm not going to say she's the only one who does. There's another man that does it, so it's not a woke thing. It's just she repeatedly does it, uh, even more than Joel does. Joel's, like, hanging on to her, making sure she stays out of the way, but this woman is actually verbally saying, stay down. She says it, like, a good three or four times at least. Um, but that's important, and, and, and it's like, I forgot what I was going to say when it comes to this. Uh, uh, I, oh, um... 
Yeah, he's right about the photo, the, the whole journalist that they do lie. I don't know much about it, but I know they lie. And but this is this is the this is Alex Garland's take on it. What if they didn't lie? What if they were objective and to the point where they didn't really get involved, even emotionally? And yeah, they took photos of people as they got shot. And you know, Lee Lee Smith is used to it. She does it as a career. It's her job. That's the job. So, but she feels something different in once again it's the emotional turnover, um, emotional change for Jesse because she sees herself in Jesse and she sees Phoenix, Phoenix rising from the ashes. Journalism, war photography continuing. So, it, it, it is kept vague for a reason. It's not about politics in this movie. I mean, is it, some people say this apolitical, which I, I don't really understand. It means uh, apolitical, I guess that's like kind of like atypical, not interested or, or involved in politics. It's like me. I'm not involved in politics. It's just about survival and getting the job done. It's not about the whole, you know, trying to do policy with the people. Um... You know, the president, his whole thing on uh, American airstrikes and what he did with the spending of the FBI and all that other shit, that's as bad as political you're going to get versus the whole different sides. Um, and it's a, it's a world trip. It's not like you're going to see army after army. You don't even get to see all the states and they're fighting, and that's good. I've heard, I remember no, no, no Duarte was complaining about that, how you didn't have enough... Uh, cities or areas of America or states, you know, showing how they were during the Civil War. Well, that's once again, Alex Garland didn't want to give too much because maybe he's leaving the open. Maybe he's planning on expanding it some way in, in like, a Netflix series or whatever. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe he just wants to leave it up to your imagination. That's the whole interpretation thing. It's just like that piece of art, like, I don't know if you look at uh, Picasso... Uh, art meant to be interpreted, meant to be interpreted. I, I really can't spell. I'm embarrassed. I am embarrassed. Philosophy of art interpretation. I'm just going to give you an example of like Picasso. Alright, let, let's look at a few Picasso paintings. And I'm doing this, I'm doing this because, like, Picasso is known as one of those different artists that you don't really know how to make out, make of his art. You know, um, <coughs> Pablo Picasso. You don't know what to make of his art. Like, look, it's obviously a person, but why is this person like this? It, it can have multiple meanings. You don't know if they'll... Bipolar, or maybe they have dissociative identity disorder, maybe they're different people, maybe they're broken or shadowed, and you know, this is like two people in one. He does, he does quite often of those. Uh, but you know, those art pieces you just see nothing but lines in, in scrolly lines. Like, let me, let me give you an example art pieces with just lines. Like, like, something like, that. that's obvious. But something like this, like, what the hell does this even mean? Is this a part of a window of a church? Or, uh, uh what does this mean? Okay, this is like an art piece made out of rubber bands, I think. Uh, but what, what is it? What does it represent? What does it mean? How do I, how do I interpret that? You know, 
And you know how, you know, a lot, a lot of people say this in rich people's houses. You have them, anybody can make art. They can just make a bunch of lines and it could just mean something. And people try to guess at it. Well, I like this piece of art. Uh, um, I don't know how to talk about it, but it looks like you meant to do this. And, and, and st like this, what, what, what is this? Is this a sunset? Uh, I don't know. It's, people just do things because it looks good. Like, obviously, that's a potion. Uh, but what does this mean right here? Is it looks like with glass? You know, it's it's weird. It's you don't you don't know how to understand the art and I know I'm babbling on you don't understand uh Anyway, I'm just going to say it. There's, there's, there's art that you just don't know how to interpret, right? And if you don't know how to interpret it, you, you, it's just left open. That's how this is. It's, it's, uh, it gives you just enough information to make your own, to, to just make your own uh, assumptions. It's a little tough on white guys. So, but. so what is trash? That means traditional. I mean, first of all, I've already talked about it. It's tough on white guys because it's it's if a civil war to happen, how it would be portrayed is 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 white people would be, you know, some people would be trying to take over. Some people might even bring back the KKK in a way. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. People get crazy in war times. You don't know what the fuck they're gonna do. Um, look at movies like The Poach. And, and once again, movies are just interpretations. We don't really know how it, 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 it's going to be different in reality. You know, um, there are some similarities. Like if you look at all the times, like with the whole George Floyd issues and all the other shit that's going on. For example, recently here in San Francisco, the, they actually, uh, the protesters blocked off the Golden Gate Bridge um, in traffic's dismay. Uh, I wish I had seen it. I'm going to give him my piece of my mind, but uh, anyway, I like how it portrays white people as the enemy, like literally. Um, and there's some white people as the good guys. When I say some people white as the good guys, I would say Kirsten Dunst as Lee, Lee Smith, and Jesse Collins, played by Kaylee Spaney. And there's like, there's two white people that are good. Two white people that are good. Um,. I'm pretty sure there's some minorities as the good guys because the black woman that shot the president, those that shot the president, those were made up of Latinos and, and black people, aka minorities. They shot the president. I mean, those seen as what? Bad guys? Or good guys? Depend that you don't really know. Uh, this is not even a woke movie, man. Like, what is Michael talking about here? Is this, did he say a fool?
So I gotta, I gotta rewind it. Me neither. Okay, hold up a second. That's the key what he just said. Think about it. If you if you put the director in Lee Smith's shoes or whatever, maybe we'll vote it. It was bullshit to me, Chamonix. Yeah. Um Lee Smith is kind of the personification of Alex Garland in saying that hopefully if I show you something that is possible, I'm telling you don't do this. And I'm hoping that it doesn't get to the point where it's going to be a here we are situation. In reality, that's going to be. So I hope, I'm hoping, like just like Michael knows here, it's, it's, it's going to not be. It's not going to be a civil war. I'm hoping that you'll learn from this movie why we don't. Why we don't need a civil war. Another recurring thing. So that was very good. I'm I'm glad that he uh I'm glad he told his take. I'm not gonna watch anybody else's. I I've seen so many videos of this one damn movie. It's like I it's crazy. I've I'm, how much I've said about it, how much other people have said about it. I've watched countless videos regarding it. I've given my take on it several times. I want to have an official review, but I can never really give an official review other than... When I say official, I mean, like, quite literally my own without referencing anyone else. You know, without watching these... Without these live streams, I want to edit it. I want to polish it. I want to even give, like, a script and just have my own. But, you know what, I, I, don't, I don't really care anymore... I'll, or maybe sometime in the future I will, but um, I'm I'm really just going to have to just just stick with uh with this. Um, I'll check this out later, but I'm happy to leave it with Michael Knowles' take. He said he likes the film, even though he misunderstands it clearly of some things. I mean, and I think he would answer himself as to why those white people portrayed as bad guys because uh. In reality, in the Civil War, that's how it would be, in in, in America anyway. Um, it, it's it's all about the dominant race, really. And and when it comes to America, we have race. Other countries don't have race as such an issue, as such a 
race is literally at the forefront of America. Okay, I know people try to be, and this is where wokeness really comes in. They try to say it doesn't matter about race. In reality, it actually does because according to woke people, reality doesn't matter. When on the people on the right side, the conservatives, they're not really conservative. They're just people that say, "Look, this is reality. If you have a penis, you're a man. If you have a vagina, you're a woman, or boy or girl. If you're younger than the legal age, you know, if you're a minor." Uh, in the same mindset, race does matter. If you're black, you're most likely African-American or African or maybe Jamaican or whatever. If you're white, you're somebody from, you're descended from Europe. It might be Irish, Ireland, it might be, uh, you know, uh, Finland, England. Uh, let's see, there's Ireland and, um, anyway, uh, um, anyway, it's just, you're from Europe. That's just how it is, if you, you know. If you look Asian, you're from Asia. You can, you can be Asian American, like Alan Inga from Threat, and you can be white, like Chris Gore from Threat. From Threat. But the idea is, is that these do, these do matter. They do not fake. They matter because this reality. And, and people like you know, Michael Knowles, and Matt Walsh and Ben Chappelle, will they tell you that it's this reality, and that's very true. You know. Um, that's what the woke, woke versus non-woke it's but this movie is not woke it's it's actually uh kind of poking fun at woke because you see some characters have dyed their hair and they also got nail polish on and you're like what the hell are they doing in this movie um it's gonna tell it from their perspective too because they're just simply trying to kill a guy who got stuck and they got stuck and they don't want to try to run away because he's a good shot so they have to kill him in order to get away uh, and it's in that that right there it shows you that in amidst this war there's just little battles that have to happen just for survival um, and then those crazy moments like at the very beginning when you had that guy had those two guys chained up and he just wanted to play with them some more before he let them go and that freak, that's, that's Jesse's first official freak out but it's not all about war matter of fact the war doesn't happen until at the very end the climax that's the climax of the entire movie is the actual war and I say war because you don't ever, you don't see war happening all the time. You don't even see takes rolling over in the news. You just hear news about it. And the movie just concentrates completely on these photojournalists. It's, the war is kind of at the, the, the war is at the forefront, and but it's also in the background. It's kind of like in the back. It takes a back seat, but it's an overarching theme where the characters is a dead center in the middle of all this, trying to get the president's last words so to speak, and also trying to get that damn photo. 